Hi, George here. The show you're about to watch was produced before the pandemic, which explains why no one's wearing a mask. Now, a lot of the places I visit are still in the process of reopening, but once things are safe and back to normal, I highly encourage you to check them out and support them. So with that said, enjoy the show. My name is George Igo, and throughout my entire life, my travel ambitions have always outweighed my bank account. But with some research, planning, and a little creativity, I find the best things to do in a city, all without spending more than $100. This is George Goes Everywhere. Hello and welcome to George Goes Everywhere, the show where we explore a city and see as much of it as we can, all without spending more than $100. I'm in Chicago today and I have six categories I want to hit. Food, drink, nature, art, culture, and one that's kind of a food culture hybrid, but you'll see. So, let's explore the Windy City on a budget. Now this episode is actually a little different. See, ordinarily I take that 100 bucks and I spread it out across all categories, but here I'm gonna be blown through most of it doing just one thing. Later tonight I'm doing something very special involving Wrigley Field and the Chicago Cubs that costs a full $84. So that means I only have 16 available for the rest of the time, so we're gonna have to get creative. When it comes to Chicago alcohol, there's a drink that's something of a rite of passage among Chicago drinkers. It's called Jepson's Malort, and it has a reputation for being one of the grossest, nastiest drinks in the world. A quick search turned up some interesting quotes about it. It's been described as tasting like pencil shavings and heartbreak, and taking a bite out of a grapefruit, then drinking a shot of gasoline. But to their credit, the makers of Malort embrace this reputation and actually use it in their marketing materials, which I kind of admire, actually. But really, who am I to turn my nose up at some nasty liquor? I mean, maybe it'll be good? The bartender says that like maybe one out of a hundred people actually like it. I mean, maybe I'll be one of the 1%, who knows? Let's do it. Oh, 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 that tastes like broken dreams. There's not really much of an aftertaste though. Oh, no, wait, there it is. Oh, the aftertaste, oh, the aftertaste. It's fading, first 45 seconds are the worst, but okay, it's not that bad. Maybe? Would I do another shot of it? I mean, I'm pr I'm probably not every day. Maybe special occasions. Do a search for old school Chicago eateries and you're bound to come across this place, Calumet Fisheries. They've been here for 90 years smoking fish and they're actually one of the only places in town that's even allowed to do it anymore because they've been grandfathered in. And if you thought I'd be getting some Chicago pizza while I'm in town, well, just hang tight. We'll get there, kinda. Now they don't have seating here. People usually just take their food then eat it in their car, but I don't have a car, so I just gotta eat it on the side of the road here. Luckily, it's not winter. Yeah, I can see why this place has been here for 90 years. And really, after that Malort shot, just about anything would taste good. All right, now that I've actually eaten some fish, there's something else fish-related that I want to check out. Don't get nervous, it's not weird. Well, it's it's not that weird. What can I say? Sometimes when you're on a budget, you end up seeking out weird things, and that's kind of what this is. Welcome to Man with Fish. This odd, borderline creepy statue of a man embracing a fish is often called the ugliest statue in Chicago. And as soon as I heard that, I knew I had to pay a visit. But there's more to this statue than interspecies love. See, this is a part of something called Statue Story Chicago. They put QR codes next to about 30 statues around town, and when you scan that code with your phone, they'll call you back and play a message of the statue talking to you, often voiced by celebrities. So let's give them a call and see what Man with Fish has to say. Man with Fish is a character, a lot of dad jokes, a lot of dad jokes. So remember when I said I'd be doing something involving Chicago pizza while I'm here? Well, it's this, the U.S. Pizza Museum. It's kind of a museum slash storefront type thing that traces the history of pizza in the United States. And it's completely free to enter, so there's really no reason not to come. But here's the thing, I grew up in the New York area, so I'm a New York pizza diehard. It's thin crust all the way for me. So I'm a little nervous about offending them with my East Coast pizza sensibilities. We'll see what happens. The good news is they don't discriminate, they celebrate all types of pizzas. California, coal fire, deep dish, of course, Detroit Square, Grandma, Grilled Pizza, Neapolitan, New Haven, Pan Pizza, Quad City, Roman, Sicilian, St. Louis, and of course my beloved New York City Slice. I had no idea there were this many types of pizza. This place is really putting my pizza knowledge to shame. They got a board here where they invite you to write how you define pizza. I think I have an answer for that. Awesome, no matter where you are. So remember when I said I was gonna do something involving nature while I'm here? Well, I was gonna go to a place that had a really awesome hedge maze, but there's a problem. Apparently there was some lightning in the area and they had to shut it down, so I won't be able to go, but that's fine. I'm calling an audible, and instead I'm going to a place called Woolly Mammoth. It's a self-described oddity shop, and I'm not entirely sure what to expect, so let's check it out. So to be in this place, something has to be both an antique 
and strange. Like it has to hit both those categories. So that gives you things like beaver wearing a top hat, rock and roll squirrels, dog playing the violin, two headed cow, human skeleton, beaver with a cape, squirrel flying a plane, Rodrigo the crocodile, a jackalope, a turkey wearing a scarf and earmuff, giant rubber band ball, and giant styrofoam King Kong. Now I showed you the fun stuff in there, but there was also a lot of other stuff that I couldn't show you, stuff ranging from the grotesque to the profane and everything in between. So if you want to see that stuff, you're gonna have to come here yourself. All right, we've arrived at the special Wrigley Field event that I mentioned earlier. I'm going to watch the Cubs game from one of their famous rooftop seats. Now, if you're not familiar, across the street from Wrigley Field are apartment buildings whose rooftops offer an unobstructed view into the stadium. Now, you might be thinking, you're awfully far from the field. These seats must be pretty cheap. Well, that's where you'd be wrong because they're actually really high end. And that is because all the food and all the drinks are included. That's right, it's all you can eat and open bar. I mean, look at this. It's absolutely amazing up here. There's nothing else like it in all of sports. It's just a completely unique way to see a game. It's like the stadium literally sprouted roots into its surrounding neighborhood. But it's not just the bleachers here. There's an entire sports bar on the top floor of the building so you can watch the game from inside and a back patio area with a cook to order grill and views of the city. So really there's something for everyone here. So yeah, now you see why I spent all this money on just this one thing. And still, this is a really good deal. These tickets usually go for over a hundred bucks. The only reason I got a deal this good is because I started looking super early and I found a deal on the resale market. So if you want to come here, make sure you put in the legwork. The weather is absolutely perfect for baseball, but there is an ominous cloud behind the stadium that keeps flashing with lightning, but luckily it stayed away from us so far. You know this place is cool because they give you a lanyard when you come in here. If you ever find yourself wearing a lanyard, you're in a good spot. Now, I'm not actually allowed to show much of the game. Major League Baseball takes their copyrights very seriously, but come on, who needs the game when you get free booze and food? So the game is over, the Cubs have won, everyone in Wrigleyville is very happy, and I think I know the perfect way to celebrate.